everyone, this is Mrs. Estes, and this is our cultures class for the Arbor Learning Community. I just finished class with you all, and I'm so excited to start learning and exploring cultures with you. So here's a recap of what we did today. Um, again, my name is Mrs. Estes here. We had some hellos, expectations, and a story today. So here's our story, check it out. So we talked about the Kaduk people of Northern California. This is a Native American First Peoples group, and this is called the Fire Race, a Kaduk Coyote tale. This is retold by Jonathan London and illustrated by Sylvia Long. You are definitely able to find this online anywhere on Amazon, as, long, uh, as well as different readers of it online and YouTube as well. So here we go. Beautiful markings here. So here's Fire Race, a Kaduk Coyote tale about how fire came to the people. Really cool pictures. The poor animal is so cold. But that would be the Kaduk River. Cool landscape and eagle here. Okay. Long ago, the animal people had no fire. Day and night, they huddled in their houses in the dark and ate their food uncooked. In the winter, they were so cold, icicles hung from their fur. Oh, they were miserable. Then one day, wise old coyote gathered everybody together. We have heard about fire, he said, but the only fire is up river at the world's end. It's guarded by the Yellow Jacket sisters, high atop a snowy mountain. They are wicked and will not share it. But listen, if we all cooperate and work together, we can steal the fire. There was much fearful murmuring about the Yellow Jacket sisters, but all grew quiet as Coyote told him his plan. Then he went on his way. So if we didn't know, Yellow Jackets are wasps, are a type of insect. Very scary, they're mean and aggressive. So he's going to check them out. Grandfather Coyote slowly trudged up the mountain at the world's end. When at last he came to the Yellow Jacket's house, smoke was rising from the smoke hole. There he is talking to them. Hmm, they're only yellow, but they have fire. Coyote looked inside. The three old sisters were sitting around the fire. Coyote said, as friendly as can be, if you let me in, I'll make you all look pretty. Suspicious. The three sisters put their heads close together and buzzed. Hmm, come in, they said, but no tricks. Mm hmm Now he's painted them. Old Man Coyote sat down and took a chunk of oak bark between his toes and held it in the fire. When it had burned into a blackened coal, he marked their yellow faces and bodies with black stripes to make them look pretty. Now, said Coyote, if you close your eyes, I will make you even prettier. He's trying to trick them now. And there he goes. And there they go. Here was Coyote's chance. While the yellow jackets were eyes were closed, he took the charred oak in his teeth and as silent as the moon is in the sky, he crept outside. Then he raced down the mountain like the wind. When the Yellow Jacket sisters found out that Coyote had tricked them, they were screaming mad. They too flew like the wind, and it wasn't long until they caught up to Coyote. They were almost on him when Coyote tripped, rolled downhill like a snowball, and landed smack at Eagle's feet. Snatching the glowing coal in his talons, Eagle spread his wings and took to the sky. Eagle was swift, but the yellow jacket soon caught up with him. Suddenly, Eagle dropped the coal. Below, mountain lion, Ki excuse me. Below, mountain lion, lion, excuse me. Below, mountain lion caught it in his great teeth and bounded off through the snow. Still, the furious yellow jackets followed. Just as they were about to sting Mountain Lion, Fox snatched the fiery coal and bounced in among the tall cedar and pine. 
fox ran and ran until she was so tired she couldn't take another step. She huffed and huffed. Her breath made clouds, and the yellow jackets were right behind her. Ooh, bear. Just in time, Bear took the fire and lunged away through some brambles. Bear, too, was quick, yet the yellow jackets were right on top of her. Even Bear could not fight them off, and she finally tumbled in exhaustion. As Bear fell, Measuring Worm, the long one, took the fire. The long one stretched out way over the three ridges, yet the yellow jackets were there, ready, waiting to strike. Somehow, right under the yellow jacket's eyes, Turtle sneaked in and grabbed the fire and scrambled off. But of course, Turtle was slow, and one of the yellow jacket sisters stung him in his tail. Aki, aki, aki! Hmm, the frog. Turtle pulled his head and legs in and flopped, flip-flopped down the hill. Flump, flump, flump. The yellow jackets were swarming all over Turtle. When Frog leaped out of the river and swallowed the fire. Gulp. Hmm. Then Frog hopped back into the river, plop, and sat on the bottom. The yellow jackets stormed the river, circling one, once, twice, circling three times, buzzing the surface. They waited and waited and waited. But Frog held the fire and his breath. Finally, the yellow jackets gave up and flew back home. As soon as the yellow jacket sisters were gone, Frog burst out of the water and spat the hot coal into the roots of a willow tree growing along the river. The tree swallowed the fire and the animal people didn't know what to do. The fire was gone. Then once again, Coyote came along and the animal people said, Grandfather Coyote, you must show us how to get the fire from the willow. So Old Man Coyote, who is very wise and knows these things, said, Ha! And he showed them how to rub two willow sticks together over dry moss to make fire. Now we have fire. From that time on, people have known how to coax fire from the wood in order to keep it warm and to cook their food. And at night, in the seasons of cold, they have sat in a circle around the fires and listen to their elders as they told old stories. And so it is, even to this day. And there's a word in Karukir, Kupakana, it's Kupana Kana Kana. There we go. Kupana Kana Kana. <laughs> it gives some information about the jewelry that was seen wearing around the book. It's called a little money necklace different information. There's another one here. This is an abalone shell. Abalone chip necklace. And I love the patterns here. Very cool. So another cool story about the cut of tails. Hi again. So here's our recap for our week. So in order to learn a little bit about cultures together, we're not gonna become experts on culture, but we definitely will become explorers of culture together. So we explored a little bit about the Kadok people today. We'll learn even more about them next week. So keep in touch with that. Here's a little bit about what we did as an activity. We drew our hands and we had information that's important from our story and what's important to this culture. So obviously fire is important, but animals are very important. The plants are important. S storytelling and keeping stories are very important. And the people are important too. So that's our class. I hope you enjoyed our class today and I can't wait to see you next week. Please keep in touch with the Kodak people. Take a look at the other videos if you'd like. We're gonna explore them even further. Have a good day, bye.